All right, if you've received some of our newest doors uh, or been upgraded to our newest blocks, then this is the video for you. <laughs> so basically, here's the deal. Uh, our new blocks will have a completely flat face on them. There'll be no more bolts in this area. Uh, it's very nice to work off of, so there's nothing in your way, both on the outward side or on the inward side. So you can see this nice flat, just really eliminates a lot of those extra bolts that we had sitting in there. But to adjust these blocks is a little bit different. So we're gonna walk you through that right now. Again, I highly recommend you get yourself a Makita. If not, get yourself a 916 inch socket and a socket wrench or an open end wrench, whatever you have. You're gonna remove the bolts. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the bolts. Once the bolts are removed, then we're gonna go ahead and slide the blocks out. Once the blocks are out, then we'll explain to you how to take and adjust those blocks and create the perfect gap. And when I mean gap, so we make sure we understand, over time, and, and this is a great example, we get a larger gap space between the block and the door. And that'll happen just because of metal fatigue over time, usually around 10 or 20,000 evolutions, we start to see this stuff happen. So the best thing to do at this point is again, go back, we're gonna remove the bolts, and we'll take the blocks out and we'll start doing some adjusting. Here we go. Sometimes, because the two plates are sandwiching the block, you'll need to loosen up a couple extra bolts. You don't need to take them out, but definitely loosen them up. Sometimes a bolt will get stuck like this one is. You use another bolt. Just tap it through there, take it out. What you'll notice in your blocks is two three-quarter inch diameter bolt heads uh, that are your adjustment points. And so to adjust these, uh, if they're, just go ahead and unscrew them. Thinking about how much I want to push out, and I saw a pretty big gap, so I'm thinking about the head of the bolt. Then I'm basically just going to reinsert this back in place. I'm going to use a bolt just to kind of hang it so I know it's in the right position. Push that up against there. Now I'm gonna walk it over here. Okay, now what happened is I pushed it in and I made it too long, right? So what does that tell me? I need to take it back in. And based on that, I probably need to take it in at least an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. So I made my adjustments, top and bottom. And we'll see how it fits. Hey, there we go. Now that's a nice looking fit right there. So that's about an eighth of an inch. An eighth to three sixteenths is a great gap to have on a door. That's probably about as tight a door as you can see uh, when you're walking around. Uh, if you don't have a shim, um, highly recommend just find something that'll give you that kind of a fit piece. Uh, but basically, it, it should be a nice and tight fit. It should not hang up on the door as you open and close it either. So now that we've got that one done, the bottom one's already been adjusted, so it doesn't need to be adjusted anymore. So now I have a nice even gap all the way across. 
What you'll notice is the pen block does not have the same gap. The pen block here in red is not supposed to be forced off of. That's what's holding the pins in place. So it is not uh, a place that your halogen should go. Another trick about this, the further over that pin block is, or the closer it is to the jam, the harder it is for that dowel to break because there's less space for the dowel to actually angle and break apart. And so one of the tricks you can do is if you want to try and make the door a little bit tighter is you can shift that red block over as far as you can so it creates a tighter fit through here. Again, we're not supposed to be working off of here. And on our newest doors, uh, this is a, uh, one of our prototypes, but our newest doors, we have our deadbolt and our doorknob, so that makes working in there even more difficult. So, uh, which is, I think, a good thing. We just want to remind you, stay off of that red block. Work all through here. So let me go ahead and get this back together. Quick tip, put your hand on the block and make sure it's set all the way in before you start to tighten. Don't tighten the front nuts and bolts first. Tighten the ones in back. That'll hold the block in place without putting too much tension on your pen block, which we still have to make sure is aligned to the holes in our jam. Okay, now our blocks aren't really moving, but I need to make sure this pen block can be moved up and down so I can make sure it lines up on the side. So before I finish tightening everything down, I'm gonna bring it over here. Grab a couple of pens. Okay, so the pin block is not lined up in this position. So just with my hammer here, I just, like we would with a Halligan camming, I just cammed it up and up in the highest position. Now I'm gonna bring it closed. Make sure the pins line up. So I make sure my pins are good and lined up. And I can use one or two. So I'll use two here just for that. I'll push that block over as far as I can get it right now. Good. This is a good thing to know this. So you notice this one, the backside of the carriage bolt's not grabbing, which is fine. Once we have one of them holding, we can now pull the pins back out open the door because in this case our security screen door is in the way of me getting around it. Now you can just hold the, the carriage bolts in place. After ensuring all your bolt, bolts are tight, you'll want to go ahead and do one last check, make sure your pin block is lined up straight. Dowel should feed in relatively easily. Sometimes we'll put a little pressure on the bottom of the door or the top of the door, just to make sure that pin block lines up, and that's fine. Make sure they move in as freely as possible, and once you've done that, you're now ready to go breach your door. So go force some doors.